Hey guys, Ray from Love You RV. So I'm pretty excited to review a new product from Halo View. As you know, I've used the Halo View rear camera system in my RV for many years now. Uh, last spring I installed what they call the Bite Tango system, and it was the BT7. Um, it had side view cameras on the RV and a rear camera and a big 7-inch uh, display. Uh, so Halo View contacted me and asked me if I'd like to review their newest offering, the BT12. And uh, it's actually quite different from any of the other um, camera models I've reviewed, being that we've got a 10 inch display and it's a touchscreen display and does a few other things besides being a rear view monitor for your RV. Um, it actually has CarPlay in it or Andro Android Auto. Um, it's got voice command, touchscreen, and uh, also goes through Wi Fi. And of course it records like they all do, but it uh, also has a forward facing dash cam. So it's a, one rear camera for the back of your vehicle or your RV, and then also a forward facing dash cam. So let's pull it apart out of the box and we'll see what we got. And then in this video, I'm gonna do the installation video and we'll do a quick test of it. And then I'll use it for a while and come back with my full review on it. If you're interested in any of the other other uh, Halo View uh, reviews, I'll put links to those as well. Wow, that's quite the load of stuff. <laughs> Halo View is pretty good at providing everything you need to hook up the units and in different combination as well. Um, for example, this is the main display, 10-inch display widescreen. On the back, you can see there's some straps there if you want to mount it to your rear view mirror, which is what I like to do. Because I already have a GPS unit that sits on my dash and various other things. So I like to have this up out of the way. Glad to see that. But they also do have this funky thing that uh, will suction cup to your window and then the display can be put on that and then moved around you know, with this accordion dealy here. Note of the back of the display, we have front rear camera and power. Here's the rear camera. So that mounts on the back of the RV. Looks very similar to the, the one I've already mounted for the, the BT7 system. And then this is the new thing. This is the front facing dash cam. So it looks much bigger than a lot of dash cams. To mount that somewhere out of the way. One good thing for me at least is they've included some plastic stuff here. They have uh, one of those is a screen protector, but the other thing is a is a thing for mounting to the windshield so that I'll be able to get the thing off easily again. When I'm done reviewing, I don't think I'll actually keep the dash cam, but I'm very interested in maybe this being my my new system for the rear view monitor. We have different mounting things for the rear camera. Not sure what that one's for. Lots of antennas, wiring. There's a power filter there. And then this is interesting. This plugs into a 12 volt power socket under on your dash. Connects the power. Has some antennas. So it looks like the display goes down and these are the antennas that connect wirelessly to the camera. And there's some function buttons there as well. Well, it looks like I'm going to have a lot of bit, a lot of reading to do to see how this thing works, but I'm going to get it installed so we can fire it up and see what's going on with the display. Well, it's a pretty nice day in the desert, not much wind today. So I think I'm going to install the rear camera first. Well, I got some good weather. I'm gonna replace the existing one from the BT7 system. I tried to pair it. I thought, well, they look like identical cameras. Maybe I could just pair it and use this one, but it didn't work out. Couldn't get it to pair, so I'm gonna put in the one that was in the package. Now you can see, I found power from an old system. I've had this junction box for quite a while. I have a cell booster there and I've had cameras so I drilled a hole in the roof and went down and found 12 volts and actually made a, made a power socket just 
and a switch just for this camera. Most people though will probably use the marker lights. They'll run down here and get the, cook the power ground to the marker light. That's why when they, when they turn on their trailer lights, then the camera will come on. They say you don't want to put this too far down. They really like the camera above the roof line, but I haven't had any issues at all with the, with the new system mounted right here. If you have a really long rig, mine's 30 feet, but some of the longer rigs, you can actually get an antenna extender so it would hook onto your antenna and then you could move it up, you know, further on the roof so you'd kind of like a repeater. Anyway, I'm going to pop that off and the cameras are basically identical. It's all built to just replace this one. There's just four screws and it has a rubber mating gasket to keep water out. So we'll pull that off, put the new one on. See down there, red and black, some crimp connectors. So I'll just do the same with this camera's cord as well to pull this apart and put some more goop in there to reseal my junction box. There we go, it's used a crimper there and the provided uh, crimps. Got a good connection. I've actually tried the display and the, the camera's working right now, so I'm ready to mount it. If you're wondering about this green wire, they use that as a, I think a trigger wire for like uh, signals and stuff or backups. So if you wanted to use this as a backup camera, you could have the trigger wire come on when you put the truck in reverse or the RV in reverse, but I won't be using that function. There we go, easy peasy. I'll just have to get some uh, more Dicor goop, redo the seals on that. I should also mention you can magnetic mount cameras too if you want. That's what this is actually about. You put it on there and you can get a magnet and just stick the camera on. And you can also get a battery pack. So you charge your battery pack and it's magnetic too. And you, you mount it somewhere that's metal and you can put your camera and your battery pack on while you're towing. But I'd rather have it permanently mounted myself. So if you're wondering where I got the 12 volt power, you can see up there, that's where um, the wires are coming down from the roof through that junction box. And then there's my cell booster there. They both go over here to a couple 12 volt uh, outlets, one for my cell booster and one for the camera. When I want to turn the camera on, I have a switch over here and just turn it on. So when I'm getting ready to tow, I'll flick that on before we head out and we'll be good to go. I was able to find some 12 volt. This is the, the Cougar's kind of switching panel where it switches a bunch of lights and ceiling fan and stuff like that. So there's lots of wires back here. I was able to nab 12 volts. I also have a 12 volt fan here. So yeah, that's how she's done. Next, let's do a quick test. I just have a power box powering the 12 volt socket there and there we are so we have two uh two views here that's out the back that's the right now with the dash cams looking at i don't have anything mounted yet we can go back to there nice brightness different levels of brightness cool Okay, in the truck and I got her all installed. I'll explain where I ran the wires in a sec. So I decided to mirror mount it. It's the way my other uh, system was. I really like this though because it's only, you know, about four inches tall. The other one would actually sit down a little bit because it was more of a square picture. Um, other ways you can mount it that come in the kit is there's this uh, thing with 3M tape. You could stick it on the dash somewhere and then that that would permanently be uh, mounted there. Some motorhomes have quite big dashes, so you might want it down low. Or this thing here sticks to the window with a suction cup, and then you can put it wherever you want. I think that probably wouldn't work very good with a suction cup. They always seem to fall off, so kind of like this, this system better. So uh, let me go show you how I wired it. Then we'll come back and uh, take a look at the, the screen and some of the settings. 
This side's a little better angle to view it from. Let's go back up here. You can see how it straps onto the mirror there. Right there. It's actually very tight. The straps are pretty good. So that was no problem there. Then I have the wires coming out and I have the wires coming down and through my dash. Now this comes apart. I've showed it in a few videos. It's pretty easy. A couple, couple screws up here and the thing just unclips. This whole thing comes back. So be able to run the wires through here and down under and pop it out here. That way I can make a connection here and plug the the sender or the, yeah the, the unit that that has the antennas for the for the camper camera at the back of the camper plugged in right there. So when I'm not using it, I can just unplug that and unplug this and then tuck those wires back out of the way. Won't be a problem. Same here. I can disconnect a wire here and uh, just hides down there underneath my uh, GPS system here and then I can unhook that. And then there's a wire here going to the rear camera. You can see it's just clipped there so I can just unplug that and take all that off. So I had decided to put the actual dash cam portion of it. I came up with the idea to put it on my rear window. I think it'll be more handy for me because uh, I'll be able to see out the back when I'm hooking up. Um, one problem I've had where I've had the dash cam display up here, when I go to unhook, then it's blocking my view. But with this, it'll act like, it'll act like a rear view mirror for me when it's showing the rear camera. So that's kind of cool. So I just ran the wire along the headrest up there and then along the door. Just the trim here, there's a, a channel you can just tuck the wire on this truck. It's actually very easy to run things. Everything just hides behind the, the headliners. And then I mounted it right there. It's beside another dash cam system. And that's going to work out pretty good. So I decided to actually stick that right on the window permanently because I'm going to use that for my, my rear view for hitching up. And then you could actually probably drive with it because it's wired, it's real, real time, so there's no lag to it at all. So it gives you a nice really wide view out the back and then it actually records and everything too. So yeah, pretty easy in this truck to, to wire it in and make it so I can unhook it, take it away and just tuck, neatly tuck the wires away. So this screen isn't showing up very good with my camera, but uh, it actually is way brighter than what the camera is showing. So it's kind of hard to do right now. I'll come back later on this evening, kind of in the evening light, so it'll be a little easier to see and we'll go through the screen. Some of the features of the screen, take a look at uh, the, the, the CarPlay thing and a few other things. Okay, light's a little better now. So I've turned it on. This is the sort of the main screen. So if you want to see the cameras, you hit driving recorder and it brings up the display. Looks pretty good. It's probably brighter. It's even brighter in, in real life than it looks like on this, uh, this camera. And I can change here can switch to the rear view so that's the camera on the back of the camper or back or I can have a split screen like that. It also has swipe capabilities so you can just swipe it and change to different things. Yeah so you can see the rear view there that's kind of nice for hooking up the trailer. You can take a picture and it's got the audio on and off. It even can do a sound thing, so I can tell it to do certain things, like I can tell it to uh, uh, take a picture. You can see it'll take a picture for me. It's just kind of nice when you're driving. You see something cool you want to take a picture of. Back here, the main screen. And there's one with all sorts of settings. I won't go through them all right now, like I say. Still learning this thing myself, so I just wanted to do the installation today. 
I'll be back with a full review and go through all that. Just wanted to give you a quick uh, overview of things. And you can see here Android Auto. So it'll hook up to the phone. It'll still show you what's going on over here. This is kind of cool. You can set it if you if you set your maps, then you have the maps right in the, the rear view like that, but you can still have what's on the screen here. There we go. It's pretty cool, all right. Parking mode on. Like that. You can have different apps, podcasts, that sort of thing. Just exit that. This will be what I mainly use it for is the the rear view and it's recording also both those views. So that's kind of neat. Cool. So I'm going to use this uh, probably at least a, a number of weeks, maybe a month. Give it a good test on our journey through the southwest and I'll come back and let you know how it's performed, whether I like it better than the previous system and uh, kind of die, take a deep dive into its settings. Until next time, Ray from loveyourrv.com. Thanks for watching everyone. Cheers guys.